Thank you, Bill. Today's speaker is Alice Teeter, and her topic is going to New Zealand as metaphor for marriage. Alice studied poetry at Eckerd College in St. Petersburg, Florida with Peter Meinke and has taught poetry to Emory University undergraduates in Atlanta. In addition to three poetry books, her poems have appeared in anthologies and journals, including Oberon Poetry Magazine, The Atlanta Review, and Per Contra. And I would add that her stage presence in comedy and improv acts is absolutely exceptional. Her pier piercing stare at fellow actors expressing, why am I tolerating the presence of this fool? I think ranks among the best in film and theater. A Florida native, she lives with her wife, Kathy De Nabriga, in Pine Lake, Georgia. Please join me in welcoming Alice Teeter. wrote this series of poems in 2014 and uh, pretty soon uh, before that I had um, discovered the Top Twins who are New Zealand's top comedy lesbian country singing music identical twin duo <laughs> um, and Kathy and I had been talking about wouldn't it be great to go to New Zealand and see them and see New Zealand and and then in 2014, gay marriage was possible in many places, not in Georgia yet, but we started talking about getting married for tax purposes. Um, for tax purposes. And uh, so I just started writing this, these poems, thinking about New Zealand, going to New Zealand, and thinking about getting married. And I've never read them all before and um, there's I think 20 of them or maybe 29 of them there's not very many it takes about 10 minutes but I thought I'd read them to you and then you can tell me what you think um, or how you feel about them so uh, and we did have never been to New Zealand but we did get married in August of that year so in Maryland not New Zealand one, we're talking about going to New Zealand. She's been twice before, once on a formal trip with black limousines and fancy hotels. The second time, a quick trip across the ditch from Australia. I have no idea what it's like. I want us to rent a pink teardrop caravan, visit both islands, stay a while. It will take adjustment, driving that driving on the left side of the road, but the travel together will be easy. Two, in New Zealand, I imagine trees that I've never seen, bark on the trunks that doesn't look or feel like any bark I know, the smell strange and new. Once I've taken it in, brushed my hand along the rough or smooth or scratchy, put the green leaf on my tongue, heard how they rustle, then I'll know how to describe them to you. Three, do the people in New Zealand ca uh, care like they do here about birds that sing in their trees? Four, a bright red cardinal calls, a robin and a mockingbird further off. I wonder what the birds will sound like in New Zealand. Five. Six. We are avid to go to New Zealand. We've a zeal to see that land. Seven. Weed eaters, grass cutters, roar and belch exhaust. Birds sing through in their riotous dance. The air is green with it. The surface of the lake swirls. 
hate. Our porch looks at theirs. The greenery that screened us from them is gone. They're rarely out there, but when they are, they're loud and noisy. Nine, grass needs mowing. The same sun shines in New Zealand in the same way. It rises earlier and later, slants from the north or the south, but it may not mean the same thing there that it does here. 10. Full moon pale in the west, sun up blazes in the east. We are between in light. After a night of rest on the fast train, ready to feast on the carcass of night. 11. Two trains sit in the station, one dark and empty, the other light and full, heading for New Zealand, for the bright land of wonder. The people talk and sit in clumps, spread through the cars. 12. Fifty years later, she came again, terrible and true, the same piano hands, soft as silk, as down-filled pillows, an octave reach, the very voice, Warp spasm face, muscle move beneath the skin, green fire eyes. Love survived conflagration, changed shape, coal seams burned and hollowed out a space. Thirteen, our feet covered in thick black mud, salt sweeps the air. We want to be in New Zealand with Kiwis as a witness, squawking raucous baby cries. We want to be in India, dust and spice our skies. We want to be wetting the masks of Maori with red dots. But we are in Bakersfield, near the desert, at a watering hole, blessed by blood. The wind whips up your hair and the gleaming gold band, the mother's voice a hiss, the father's bright brown eyes. What did our sisters bring? What will our brothers see? Our cousins casting lots? The oranges are all peeled. No one was hurt. They've lifted up the wedding pole. 14. My people are all buried far away from New Zealand. Without children, how much time is spent drinking wine or listening to the wind blow through the trees? Pink blossoms, purple blo blooms have fallen, litter the ground. Even with children, they go into the world. Your parents, your children, your brothers, sisters, cousins leave you. This is what's really going on. The wind is blowing. Fifteen. The lawnmower roars under the bird calls. The sun is going down. The azaleas bloom. Silence. We wait and listen. Will it start again? The birds and azaleas continue, as, the, as does the sun here in New Zealand. 16. You cannot help it. There are days when you do something wrong, drop a glass that shatters on the floor, and a missed bit stabs her bare foot, sticks deep, draws blood. You are sure you will never be forgiven. 17. Another day, the same thing happens. This time, the glass full of red wine spills everywhere, all over her favorite chair. Blot, she says, don't rub the carpet, too. But today, there is laughter. Forgiveness doesn't enter in. 18. New Zealand wines are good. Red or white, it doesn't matter which you spill onto the oriental rug. 19. A big old tree came down around the block from us. No harm done to life or limb and only a little bit to property. It fell in the middle of a breezy sunny day. It was a Sunday. So I thought of global warming, desertification, how the trees slowly fall. But on a Wednesday, I might have felt only that its time had come. 20. The shade slowly moves as the sun does. The bright rays fall on the roof of the car, the glass windows, the heat rises as the shade falls. 
They are all different, all the same. Waiting rooms have their own devices, symptoms, cures. 21, I kiss you, but it is not you. Your lips are soft, they part, we kiss again. The scrap of paper with your phone number is in my hand. People we know are watching. 22, do they have Lalique in New Zealand where salmon is $6 a pound? We are like snails, producers of slime, slugs without shells, but our mucus treats skin spots, wrinkles, scars. 23, she's gone on the megabus. Who can I tell how sad I am? Here at work, they'd look at me like I was crazy or getting too old for the job. Someone in New Zealand might understand, but it's so far away, and it would either be a voice crackling over the phone or an email, or worse, a voice that sounds so close I could reach out my hand, touch someone's warm arm. 24. On the shore of a lake, a camera could capture the clouds lined up, scuttling along the dawn horizon, the bright light, light of a vapor trail behind, but not the bird's song calling. A video could capture the thunderhead looming high above, the sun setting above the trees, birds fluttering up together from the grass, but not the sharp fresh air, the smell of the lake, or the breeze blowing through the fine airs on your arm. 25. Asking for help and performing are the same. The audience, audience wants to be of use. The sun is almost down. I've almost finished a bottle of wine. I'm ready to go on. 26. I remember the first time I ever noticed it. All the dads were standing around in their bathing suits, talking on the thin strip of beach by the lake. Down from the house came a beautiful woman across the thick green carpet of grass, her high heels sinking deep into the turf with each careful step. The dads all sucked in their guts, stood up straight, slicked back their thinning hair. Do dads do the same in New Zealand? 27, what in the world is going on? It's all about you. What in the world is going on? It's all about you. 28, there is a hedge I drive by every day, as tall as a tree, two blocks long. This time of year it is filled with fragrant flowers, even though it is late spring. I drive with the windows down. The sweet smell smothers me. I hope to be caught by the light. I bet New Zealand has a hedge like this somewhere. 29. Every time I open my wallet in New Zealand, I find more money. It's impossible to organize. Ones mix up with 20s, 5s, and 10s in no sequence. I group them by denomination. But the next time I look, there's even more cash there, all mixed up. I'm rich, but I find it impossible to count. <laughs> Is there any questions or com any questions or comments? No. Only in my mind, but we did get married, yes. And in, I'm not dead yet. So. Yeah. Let's use this mic if we, if we um, have comments so that it is also recorded, if that's okay. So I was just going to say there was one phrase in, that, in the poetry I will never forget, and that's feasting on the carcass of the night.
I love that image of the high heels uh -huh. on the soft <laughs> turf. I, I loved all of the images that it conjured up in my mind, but particularly from India where I have been and Bakersfield where I have been. <laughs> and believe me, that's, there's a big difference. I have not made it to New Zealand or uh, Australia, and I'd like that too. But just, uh, I think very visually and place oriented, so there was much there for me to enjoy. Alice, it's so good to hear you again. Uh, I, f I remember your, your imagery was always unique and always a little bit unexpected, and I find that in this series of poems, too. I think that um, going to New Zealand as a metaphor for marriage, is it like marriage is like an unknown paradise-like place that you haven't <laughs> been to yet <laughs> in these poems? Is that, is that so? <clears throat> well, it's an unknown place uh, and that mm -hmm. sounds pretty cool, you know. Yeah. It does. And I just have a question which you don't have to answer. Is the person you're talking about whose arm, the hairs on her arms stir and other things, is she familiar or is she a stranger? Well, you you can decide that. Okay. I, I, okay. <laughs> I often don't know. So. It's like it's almost like saying I'm not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I just want to say I appreciate so did, much hearing your poetry. Did you have a sense of it being a stranger or familiar? In some of them, it sounded familiar, and in some, it sounded like a stranger. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Alice, I remember a workshop I took with you. Um, and what you talked about was point of view. And so I noticed that, you know, part of it was you and, um, cause I think one of them you started with you and it was like, it's not your fault. And so it m took me back to that and how you had us write a poem for Mother's Day and one for my mother. And uh, I remember seeing how the first per person's point of view is usually a self expression, it's like a I'm on the turf. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I want to thank you because I remember that from years ago and I still think about that even though I don't write much poetry. But um, I always write fiction from the third person point of view. Yeah. I thought Charlene's question was really interesting about whether the person mentioned was or or not because that that sense of um, someone very familiar also that sense of someone very familiar also seeming like a stranger that that whole sense that you evoked was really strong for me it's sort of also like the sense of looking in a mirror at your own face and suddenly not knowing who the hell it is We may need new batteries. There's a, a, a show on Netflix called Live to Lead, and the Prime Minister of New Zealand was interviewed. And she's the youngest Prime Minister that's ever been a Prime Minister. And she's the one who dealt with the 50 Muslims who were killed 
uh, in New Zealand. And uh, anyway, it's amazing. So if you ever get to watch her as part of that show, just a terrific. I think New Zealand has also had a trans person prime minister. So. And the Top Twins uh, documentary is called Untouchable Girls, and they are, uh, they were, very, uh, well, they're still performing, uh, but they're very uh, much activists for Maori rights and anti-nuke and everything I'm sure we love, so. Okay, thank you.